Well, I love vaulted ceilings. I love the look and the feel that they give to a living room. But one of the major downsides is just the amount of enormous space they create to, uh, to decorate. And for a while, for the past year, I've actually uh, had a three foot in diameter clock hanging up on this wall that I made about a year ago. Uh, and whenever I originally came up with the, uh, this idea of mounting a clock up on this, this wall to take up some of the space, I really wanted to make it like six feet in diameter. I mean, you see how big this wall is. And my husband caught wind of it, vetoed it. He said, no, six feet's too large, so he compromised at three. Well, I've been thinking three is just, you know, it's just not, it's, it, it looks small on this wall. And so he's actually gone for the day, and I'm thinking about making a four foot in diameter clock. Just another foot, no big deal. I'm gonna put it up on the wall and I bet he won't even notice. But anyways, I already have a written tutorial from my very first um, attempt at this on my blog. So if you prefer a written form, it's already there for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and put together a build video as well for you visual learners out there. So I guess let's get going. I've always thought that this fence panel was pretty useless, so I decided to take it down and use it for this project. Measure. What I like to do is grab a tape measure and get a visual for where my clock is going to fall on these slats. That way I can move it up and down or to the left and right depending on what those slats look like. I mark center and then I grab a piece of string and make it the length of the radius. I tie one end to a screw, find center and screw it in place. And then I attach a paintbrush to the other end. Now I just start painting on the circle. Make sure that you keep your string tight all the way around as well as keeping your paintbrush as vertical as possible. Voila! Yeah, I think, I think you might notice this. And so I've made the executive decision to cut it down to 42 inches to um, three and a half feet in diameter rather than four, so that'll take six inches off. It'll put it roughly around here. So I'm gonna shorten this up, make me another circle, and then get to cutting. Darn it. You know what I just realized? I ended up taking six, six inches off the radius, which took off an entire foot from the diameter, which leaves me with a three foot clock, which is what I had in the first place. What I need to do is just take off three inches from the radius in order to get six inches total. So let me draw another circle and then I'll get to cutting. center, marking it, and then I'll get after it with my router. Uh, real quick on this movement, um, for such a large clock, you do need a high torque movement, and you can either order them online or places like Hobby Lobby sells them. So 
with it. The way that I do rust is I just kind of get some on my paintbrush, dab it on, and then more or less just kind of smear it around. And that's exactly why I use these cheap little $1 chip brushes. It's just so I don't have to worry about messing up the bristles on the high quality ones. First coat's kind of dry, I'm just going to go back over it with a second coat. To make a black border, I grabbed a paint stick and drew a line at half an inch. Then I used this as a guide to go around the entire diameter. It doesn't have to be perfect since I'm going for a rustic look. I would put the paint stick in place and then just paint to the left or right of it. Since I already showed you how to use a string and screw to make your own compass, I decided to make it easy on myself for this next step and use an actual compass to lay out my numbers. These need to be spaced apart 30 degrees. I would put the number in place and then just start putting it on. I personally used a stencil brush, but you can use whatever you have laying around. Put on the hand, and then you can flip the clock over and put in two screws to give you a way to hang the clock. So I, I first put on this 24 gauge uh, galvanized wire, which I typically use, but since this clock is a little bit bigger, it's heavier. So I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade to some Balin wire. And the point that I wanna get across on whenever you twist these, I just, I made a small loop and then I put it in my vise to hold it since I'm not strong enough to do it without it. But anyways, what you wanna do whenever you're twisting something like this is make sure that both of the wires are wrapping around one another and that it's not just one wrapping, staying straight up and down and then the other one wrapping around it because then what's gonna happen is if it has enough, um, weight on it it's gonna it's just gonna unravel whereas if you make sure that both are wrapping around each other then it's not going to well here it is and i must say i'm really glad that i went ahead and cut off some of the diameter because i think that this size works out perfect for this space so like i've already said i already uh, have a written tutorial posted on my blog with step-by-step -step photos from my first clock and i also have photos of the different color variations that i've made this clock in just to give you some ideas of what other co colors look like. So I guess I'll see you next time.